everyone welcome to deep codes and today in this video we will discuss biweekly contents 94 question count anagrams so here in this question we are given a string s containing one or more words so the words are separated by uh, this space and further we need to count the number of distinct anagrams for the given string so for an anagram anagram is just a permutation of the word and for each word let's say abc the its anagram would be bca or caf so similarly for dfe our anagram would be dkf uh, and further each word index or the position must remain same let's say for abc dfe if we do def and caf means uh, uh, for dfe you place it at index 0 then it's uh, it's not uh, the anagram for the given sentence so we need to maintain the index uh, to count the anagrams uh, as well as uh, it would be an anagram for that word and finally we have to return distinct anagrams with a module of 10 to 9 plus 7 okay so the first uh, example we have given is too hot let us try to produce some of the anagrams for this sentence so it's given too hot so the possible anagrams are let's say for two i write i can write o t o hot other than another than is o o t hot Another would be let's say O T O then O H T O T O then O T H O T O. Uh, it's written now O T then O H T. So similarly, there can be many possible anagrams here. So if you want to count the total possible anagrams would be, then we will use one concept of factorial. Factorial. So this is a mathematical concept where factorial of a number n equals to n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into up to 1. So let's say factorial of 5. So 5 factorial would be 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. So this is 5 factorial. So we will use here the concept of this factorial and we would uh, try to uh, produce as many uh, and, uh, uh, permutation or anagrams possible for the given word and here each word of the sentence are to be treated separately and we would simply multiply the answers let's say for uh, two this word two the possible anagrams would be o t o o o t so for this word three possible anagrams are possible uh, so further if you want to compute this in a mathematical way what you can do is let's say uh, first you will count the number of characters so number of characters are 3 so do 3 factorial divided by how many uh, the repeated letter so uh, the repeated letter is 2 means 2 times o is there so 2 factorial we will divide so that would be 3 factorial would be 3 into 2 divided by 2 uh, so this would uh, give us our answer 3 and this 3 for this 3 are the possible anagrams for this word 2 similarly for hot uh, the possible anagrams are H T O O H T then T H O then T O H okay then so how many are there one two three four five one more would be there uh, H here H here okay so one would be H here O O is three times here two times here so yeah, OTH would be one possible solution. So total possible anagrams here are six. So the another way to find out is three factorial. There be nothing is repeating. No characters are repeating. So one factorial, and this would give us answer three into two, six. Six would be answer. And finally, what we would do, we would multiply answers of all the words in a sentence. So here three into two will give us eighteen. So eighteen possible anagrams are there for this uh, sentence. Too hot. Okay. So similarly, uh, further we are given one another uh, test case EA. So total characters here are is 2. So we will do 2 factorial divided by 2 factorial because the number of limited letters are 2. And we would get answer as 1. Okay. Now let us take one another example of any word like A, B, C, C, B, D, A, E. So here number of characters are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we will do 8 factorial upon how many times a is repeated two times two factorial multiplied by b is repeated two times so two factorial uh, c is repeated two times so two factorial 
into e is repeated one time so one factor one factorial is one itself uh, so this would give us the possible answer that can be with any number x so this would be our answer uh, for the total number of anagrams possible for this word and if there are multiple words we will simply multiply their answers here so i hope uh, you got the concept of how we would be uh, solving this question further for the factorial part means computing the factorial for factorial of let's say 2 then 3 uh, then 5 uh, we don't we won't compute it all the time what we would do we would take one uh, factorial vector uh, and we would compute for all the numbers starting from 0 up to up till the last number that is 10 less to 5 so we will pre compute this just to save our uh, time here time of processing and uh, we would simply use the answer of factorial of each number from here so here the factorial of, of i with uh, would be stored in the ith index so this way we would pre compute uh, in this factorial vector and use the answer for the further processing so let us now move towards the coding part here let me reset my id okay uh so everything we would be processing here in long long so let me first define ll as long long now i would make one vector of long long to store the factorial i would also initialize one mod integer that is 1 10 to the power 9 plus 7 uh then i would just resize this vector uh vector factorial vector to 10s to the power 10s to the power 5 plus 1 okay now let us write a function to pre compute this factorial vector okay and here we would start uh, let us just initialize factorial of 0 as 1 also factorial of 1 is 1 and we would start the loop from i equals to 2 up till the end that is 10 raised to the power 5 and simply increment of i and yeah factorial of i is just the factorial of previous number into the ith number and further what we would do is we would simply mod these numbers and our answer to prevent integer overflow so this is how we have computed this factorial uh, variable now further we need to uh, we need two variables like one for the answer let me initialize it as one because one is uh, one is the minimum answer that is possible uh, and further one count variable to count the number of characters in this word so for for a given sentence we would process each word separately so let us uh, and further also we need to take one unordered map a uh, unordered map to store the frequency of a character in that word so let me take character int and store the frequency here and after computing this word we would again uh, clear this map and initialize the count variable to zero correct now let us look for all the characters in a word as in a string as and let's say if we encounter a space then we would uh, process the previous word if not uh, if not then what we would do we would simply incre increment our count variable and uh, store the frequency of the character of i uh, in this frequency map uh, further uh, one thing to note here is uh, in order to process this last word we have we need some space so that we can uh, Uh, verify or we can go into this if condition so for that case i am just adding one space here so that we can process this last word i've got it uh, now let me take one variable value that would be equal to factorial of count so that is this is a uh, this this is let's say there there are eight letters and initially uh, we are taking factorial of eight then we would uh, divide it by the the frequency so that same thing i'm doing here and then for uh uh we trading to this frequency map and i would divide value equal to value divided by factorial of it dot second that is factorial of frequency and i would simply multiply it with the answer 
so i hope you got this so let me do a more here and in the end i would simply return our answer variable so let us try to run this uh equals to This is done by zero zero. Okay, one thing uh, we forgot here is uh, we also have to again make the count to zero, and uh, uh, we need to clear this frequency map uh, once we have processed our word. Factorial of i t of zeta. Uh, so the thing is, we just uh, forgot to call this function factorial function. Now let me try to run this. Okay, so it passed both the test cases. So now let me try to submit this. Okay, so here it is giving it is giving a wrong answer. So the thing here is, uh, whenever uh, we are doing this modular function and we are also dividing it with um, uh, this value is itself uh, completed with help to this mock modulo, and also we are dividing the modulo. So we cannot simply divide this for a large number. So here we have to use the concept of modular exponentiation. So I would uh, provide the link of this article in the description. Let me just try to explain a bit of this thing here. So here what we are doing is let's say uh, a is our numerator and b is our denominator. So we are trying to do uh, a divided by b. A divided by b. So instead of what we would do a into b inverse. So uh, this would be uh, because a is itself uh, produced by modulus of modulo of m, b is itself produced by, produced by doing modulus of m. Uh, so instead of dividing, this would give us a wrong answer. So we would multiply by taking the inverse of b, and this is the concept of modular exponentiation. Exponentiation. So when we um, do an exponentiation, uh, instead of taking int into the division. So let us try now try to write the function for this inverse. So let me take this inverse function and I would call another function power of mod by passing this now and one another number mod minus two. So if you might be thinking by mod minus two, uh, so you will get that answer in inside this article. Also, we will discuss about this concept later in some another separate video. So as a case of now, we will simply just code the function and let us try to see how this works. Let me initialize one answer variable to one, and we would simply do while b is greater than zero. So if b is an odd number, b modulus two equal equals to one, then what we would do is we would multiply answer with uh, a doing the modulo. Uh, and in and further we would uh, do a square modulus mod, and we would simply divide b by two, and simply at the end we would return answer. And here uh, instead of doing this factor here, what we would do, we would multiply with inverse function of i t dot of factorial of i t dot second. Okay, let's do the mod here. Uh, so let me try to add this test case here. Let us try to run this. Okay, it's mod here, not mod. Okay, so as you guys, guys, you can see here that uh, it passed the test case, and let us try now try to submit this. Okay, so our answer got accepted here. So the thing here is, uh, in, uh, we can't do a directly division of these uh, big numbers when we have taken modulo. So we have to take inverse of this, that is mod modular exponentiation. Uh, so that was the catch here in this question. Otherwise, it was a simple question. If you know this uh, permutation combination concepts, and if you can find total number of different permutation or anagraph possible for this uh, case. So I hope you like the video. Thank you. So that's all for this video. I hope you guys like the video. And if you have any doubts, let me know in the comment section below. 
make sure you like the video and subscribe to our channel thank you